Hello people, I am Jabby Kawai. Today we are going to talk about Raman Raghav 2.0, the highly anticipated Anurag Kashyap film, highly anticipated by Jabby, and it stars Nawazuddin Siddiqui, one of Jabby's favorite Indian actors, as well as Vicky Kashal, I'm not familiar with him, and this film also introduces Sohita Dulipala. <laughs> Nawazuddin plays Ramana, and Vicky plays Raghavan. Hopefully, you guys don't get confused by those names. Just to let you guys know, this is a spoiler-free review. I will not be spoiling anything that should be spoiled, so don't worry about the spoils. You won't be spoiled. It'll all be okay. I'm gonna read you off the IMDb description real quick. Set in present-day Mumbai, the story follows the life of a serial killer, Ramana, who was inspired by an infamous serial killer from the 1960s, Raman Raghav. His strange obsession with Raghavan, a young cop, keeps growing as he closely follows him without his knowledge and often creates situations where both of them come face to face. Now that that's out of the way, I was really looking forward to this movie. The trailer looked solid. As I said many times, I love Gangs of Wasipur 1 and 2, so I had very, very high expectations for this film. Were those high expectations met? Did they come anywhere near close, my expectations? No, they did not. That being said, the film was okay. The film had a number of decent moments throughout. Some really tension-filled situations, some scary parts. It's very well acted by Nawazuddin Siddiqui. For the most part, Vicky Kashal did pretty good. There were some moments where I was like, Okay. I really liked Sobhita Dulipala. I thought she was wonderful and beautiful and wonderful some more. Is there a spell I... The film certainly has a bit to say about our justice system, the people who are in charge of enforcing the law, and the people who are on the other side of the law. And in between, you have good people who get hurt, is what it seems like the film is trying to say. One of the interesting devices the film uses is music. I am a... At certain moments in the film, you'll catch certain tunes happening, and they are intrinsically tied to a specific character. I think it's Anwar Kashyap's way of indicating to the audience, it's kind of the character's high. It's when the character almost feels like a rock star. It's when the character feels like a king in the situation. That's when those songs kick in for that specific character. Sometimes it's a good really, it's just Ramana and Raghavan who get music tracks for their brain, for their mind. I really enjoy that as a device in film to communicate to the audience the emotional state of that character. Without using words from the character, without direct exposition, the director is still able to communicate his point to you, which is the character is having a high the character's feeling dominant. So, how is Nawazuddin Siddiqui's performance in this film compared to other Nawazuddin films? I like to call Nawazuddin Siddiqui the Daniel Day-Lewis of India. He demonstrates that once again here. The person he plays is unlike roles we've seen him in before. Just taking the last Anurag Kashyap film I've seen him in, two totally different people. Completely, through and through. The way the character behaves, the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he holds himself, it's very different. Even the way he smokes feels different. This again renews my love and appreciation for Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Now, all that being said, I think I've covered all the good things that I liked about the film. I walked out of it really not sure how to feel. Without giving anything away, at the end of it, I didn't feel any kind of resolve. I didn't know who I was rooting for in the film. Both Ramana and Raghavan are not good people. They're both pretty messed up. The only difference I can see is Ramana is pretty committed to his evil ways without any sort of weird justification, without hiding behind the badge, without making any kind of excuses. He just likes to kill people unequivocally. He is very clear about that in the film. At the end of the day, it seems like the point of the film is postulating, putting forth to you that we all have this innate desire to kill. We all have a villain within us. Only a handful of us actually admit it. Now, Azuddin Siddiqui's character is one of those people who admits that he enjoys killing. But the thing is, it doesn't... I never got the sense that he was calculating his kills. It always felt like he was simply doing it in the spur of the moment. It always, always like a situational thing where he kind of had to kill that person because it was basically evidence. It was someone who would have stopped his mission. A mission that didn't feel like it was strong enough for me. It didn't land for me. It's like, that's why you're doing all this? I didn't know why I was watching the movie three quarters of the way and I'm like, I have no idea who the fuck I'm following right now. There were no characters I could root for. As I understand it, Anurag Kashyap is a, a huge fan of Western films. It's evident to me that he is a big fan of Martin Scorsese and it was evident with this film that he's a fan of David Fincher. Especially with the opening. There's an opening sequence in the film that feels very reminiscent of David Fincher, whether it be Fight Club. <laughs> 
girl with the dragon tattoo. The thing that Onward Kashyap seems to have in common with Martin Scorsese, at least from the two or three films that I've seen so far of his, is that he likes to spend time with villainous characters that society rejects or finds appalling. Wolf of Wall Street was about a crooked stockbroker. Gangs of New York is about gangs in the 1800s New York. Goodfellas is about New York gangs in the, in the 60s or 70s. Casino is about the Italian mafia in the early days of Las Vegas. The list goes on and on and on. There's not too many directors who like to spend time with the villainous people of society. And that's what Roman Ragov 2.0 does. But usually, even in those kinds of films, you need a redeemable character. You need someone to hook onto that you can at least relate to a little bit, that you see See the world through. For instance, in Goodfellas, you had Ray Liotta's character. You saw the world through his eyes. He was the guy you kind of wanted to be. You were kind of envious of him, and he was living the life that you would love to live. Here, you got people on both sides of the law doing really fucked up things. Who am I supposed to follow? Who am I supposed to root for? I don't know. So you're just watching a movie with two antagonists, essentially, and that's it. And I'm like, okay, I don't know why I'm watching this movie. I don't know why this movie has been made. Generally speaking, when you have a film, when you have a story, whether it's a book or whatever, at the end of it, it's like you, you're you supposed to be able to answer the question, why did you tell me this story? What was the moral of the story here? And I didn't really get a moral out of Raman Raghav 2.0. I didn't get a lesson out of it. So I walked out of the movie going, okay, well that happened. I don't know what I'm supposed to take away other than society's fucked up. Now that might be the point. That might be what um, Anurag Kashyap was going after. Society's fucked up, yo, deal with it. Another important rule in storytelling is that where your characters start out should be different from where they end up. However they are at the end should be totally different from how they are at the start. That's called an arc. Uta Punjab is a great example. Hopefully I didn't butcher that name. Most of the characters in that film have arcs, have story arcs, and it's fucking great. Here, there are zero arcs. Whoever people are at the beginning is exactly how they are at the end. That's not a good thing. Anwar Kashyap takes his time with this movie. It's slower paced. Scenes just kind of linger. And the point of it lingering is to create inner tension to create suspense. The thing is here, most of the violence is shied away from. It happens off screen. It's mostly audio that you hear, body slams that you hear, and blood spurt, and you hear that. There's an argument to be made for that. Spielberg what, has quoted a director, and I'm gonna paraphrase this terribly. It's often what you don't see that scares you. That's one of the reasons Jaws was so successful. The way that device is being used in this movie felt contrived. It's like the camera moved away to avoid showing you the violence. I'm like, this isn't a TV movie. You're building up to that moment, show it. I, I didn't understand why he was shying away from it, considering the egregious violence in Gangs of Wasipur. This goes the complete opposite direction where you basically see none of the violence in the movie, but maybe one time. And that kind of frustrated me a little bit. I'm like, I, not that I'm craving violence, but you're building up this dramatic moment where you're, you're creating tension. Love hurts. But then you're kind of undermining the tension when Sometimes it's so good. you don't show the consequence of the scene. This is a confusing feeling. I, I've let this movie sit in my mind for several hours now. I still don't know how to feel about this movie. It's just weird. So if you guys have seen the film, let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's something I'm just missing, if there's something culturally relevant that I, that, that, that went over my head. All right, that's it you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please check out our other movie reviews, short films, trailer reactions, video game related videos, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm Jabby Kawei. Peace out.